In my previous video I built this wonderful Pentium Pro machine with full SCSI, Windows NT, a Voodoo Rush and in the end of making of that video I was getting a little bit done with this build because I had some problems. Hi my name is Victor Bart and welcome by Retro Machines and we're gonna fix those problems today in this video. The first problem was the speakers are not working and the hard drive was annoyingly loud, the CD-ROM player had trouble with reading some CDs and the floppy drive wasn't working. Also the drivers weren't that great, the Voodoo Rush didn't even have 3D support. I tried and filmed running Half-Life on this machine in the previous video but I just got it out, it was not working. Only in software mode with 50 frames per second. So let's dive into this system and fix it up. Let's open the speaker unit because the LED is not turning on. So the wires are pretty thin, so maybe there's a problem with the wires. The caps look all fine. It's a pretty simple uh, PCB. This is the power connector. No burnt marks on any part. Let's measure the power cable. Okay, that is working. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> now my skills uh, of uh, repairing electronics are done. I can measure the power supply, <laughs> but the rest of the parts, <laughs> it's not really my thing. Let's measure if I get any voltage output on here, and it's 12.4 uh, volts. So the unit gets power, but it's not turning on. Let's try something out because between this pin and this pin I don't measure anything and there's a uh, print lane there. Let's use this wire to make a connection <laughs> and I hope nothing will go boom. Hey, that is working! I have an LED now! Ha! <laughs> I think I need to get my soldering gun and make a connection. <laughs> I fixed it probably. Not sure if you can see it, but here the print lane is correct. So that is a pretty easy uh, thing to fix with uh, my uh, basic electronic skills. The soldering demonstration is only for fun and entertainment because I suck at soldering. So I baked a little copper wire in between, yeah I don't call this soldering, it's just terrible. <laughs> but let's hope it works, then I fixed it and nobody will ever see this horrible thing again. Let's see what happens when I power it up. Wow, it works! <laughs> I'm gonna play a video of me now and see if they work. I already hear something. Okay, it works, but the sound quality is totally horrible. Let's use some tuner spray here in the volume button. Uh oh, is it empty? I oh no, no, there's a little bit. It's almost empty. Lol. This uh, can is also like 15 years or more old and it's kinda empty. Maybe it now has some more pressure. Yes, it has pressure but not much uh, spray. <laughs> some fluids come out. Okay, I drench the button now. Okay, this is helping a little bit, it's not perfect, but probably the speakers are so crappy that 
this is the best I can do with this. <laughs> but at least the speakers are working and I can put them back in the system. I bought a new set of screwdrivers but they are not magnetized. So I have a magnet here. And now they are magnetized. And if you want to demagnetize, look, demagnetized, magnetized. The 9 gigabyte 10 platter Scusi hard drive from Quantum is really awesome with 1.6 inch height, but it makes a terrible noise, so yeah. It is screaming like a maniac with a high pitched noise, and I just fucking hate it. I uh gonna replace this. So here we have some replacement options, all are 68 pin. I have two EBM Ultra Stars, 9 gigabyte 10,000 RPM. I have a 9 gigabyte 10,000 RPM Fuyuchi with a compact sticker and this Max for Atlas 10K3 and I think this is 18 gigabyte. Yeah, what should I choose? Oh, there's one is from July 2000, December 2001. <laughs> so this is pretty new. I think I just go for the EBM Ultra Star 9 gigabyte 10,000 RPM, a modern drive. So probably the most silent but uh, quantum atlas 10k3 is also pretty silent and also a great option and also comes out in compact because of the compact screws and i'm gonna put in this standard mitsumi uh, 1.44 megabyte floppy drive and the cd-rom player is this nice plexro ultra plex 40 max with a 50 pin scusi interface and this is an absolute great drive but also March 2001. I don't gonna stick too much to a certain date for this build because I just want to have solid parts but a 9 gigabyte drive is not too big and I just want to have a scusi drive that really reads all kind of CDs. <laughs> This is a much better sound level and now the case is even open so when it's closed it's just perfect. Oh there's Windows Server 2003 uh, on it. Let's see if it boots. Okay at least it reboots. <laughs> okay that uh, installation is uh, broken. The Plexor is not uh, found. The jumper is not on the ID setting but on parity. I was thinking it was on ID6, so let's change that. Okay, opgelost. Bootable CD-ROM detected. And let's install Windows NT 4.0. Windows NT4 is installed now and with the 40 speed CD-ROM player and the 10,000 RPM SCSI drive this is a way faster and more responsive setup and the installation went super quick so I'm really happy with this uh, upgrade it's a bit too new for a Pentium Pro but for the usability it's perfect I also installed a Fudu Rust driver, so I now have 1024 and True Color and stuff like that. Only I have no 3D support in this driver. So what I gonna do is try out to install the Fudu One 3D Fix driver for Windows NT because I can't really find the Fudu Rust driver for Windows NT with 3D support. The internet is letting me down on that driver. So let's try this out. Set up. Yes. Hmm, Dr. Watson error. Let's 
try that again. Okay, this is not working. I'm gonna download an earlier driver and try it again. And this is the oldest driver that I could find. Because I'm not doing this build for the highest performance of the parts. Just to have a cool Pentium Pro build. Of course! Let's restart the computer! <laughs> That's the fun of Windows NT installations! Reboot, reboot, reboot! One click and you need to reboot. So much memory in this system, it takes forever to count. 256 megabytes. And for the people that uh, didn't watch the other video, the CPU is a Pentium Pro 200 with 256 uh, kilobytes of cache. And we have of course a floppy drive, a zip drive, a uh, Sound Blaster 32. And a uh, Tricom ESA network card, Adaptec 2940 uh, Scusi card, and a Fudu Rush, which I'm now trying to install. But if you didn't see the first video of this build, please watch it, it's uh, pretty long. <laughs> and a lot of information how to build an AT machine with Scusi. Let's see if Quake 2 will run on the Fudu 1. Oh, and I didn't install the sound card uh, right now. Uh, let's try 3DFX OpenGL full screen, yes. Okay, that doesn't work. Let's try default OpenGL. Okay, not sure how I need to install the Fudu Rush on the Windows NT. Maybe it's not possible and this card is more for a Windows 95 build. I'm not sure if the Fudu Rush will work on the Windows NT4 with OpenGL because I can't find the right drivers and I ask on the Retro Machines Facebook group and everyone is linking to all the 3D fix archives and no good driver is found there. So what I can do is continue searching for the right driver or I can take the Fudu Rush out and put the Fudu Rush in maybe a Windows 95 build. Would that be interesting? I think the Fudu Rush and Windows 95 is a better combination than with Windows NT4. So let me know in the comments what you think about that plan. And what kind of CPU would you use for Fudu Rush with Windows 95 for uh, like light gaming, like the first 3D uh, titles? Here we have my box for 3DFX cards. So let's see what alternative card I have to put in this system. If I choose a Fudu 1 or Fudu 2, I might add a Matos card or something like that. But I think I have a card in here that also kind of fits the build. So let's look for it. Here I have Fudu 5, uh, Fudu 2 SLI setup, but that doesn't fit in this case because the CPU socket is uh, weirdly placed behind the PCI slots. And uh, Fudu 1, that could be an option from Diamond. That's a pretty nice card. Maybe this one. Here I have two Fudu Benchies, but they are both HCP, so that doesn't work. Oh, they are both from Diamond, from 1998. Also a nice card, but I don't have an HCP slot. And with an HCP slot, I would first choose a Fudu Tree instead of a Benchy. Oh, this is just a Fudu 2, of course, but with 100 megahertz uh, memory chip. So a little bit more than the standard 90 megahertz. Here we have a Fudu 3 3000 and one PCI card, but I think this is the card that has problems. So I don't gonna use it in this system. It probably doesn't even work. And the other tools are HCP. And then we have this card. And I was looking for this, because it's a PCI bus. 
and this is some Fulu Binchy. And I think this is a 60 megabyte card, even with a little active cooling. And there's no uh, name on it. PCI card, 3DFX, and I already checked, and the Fulu Benshi has a lot of Windows NT drivers. So probably this card will work fine with Windows NT. So uh, let's install it. So this is the Fudu Rush with a daughter board with the 3DFX chips and an Alliance uh, AT 3D chip uh, set for the 2D. It's an Hercules Stingray 128 uh, 3D and this card has 6 megabyte, But <laughs> no uh, working drivers to be found for Windows NT. So if someone has the right drivers with 3D support please Provide them to the driver archives. I think the files are just missing in the archives. So let's put the Benchy in. And the Benchy is so short that uh, I don't have any cards now sticking uh, over the CPU area. So if I found a very long PCI card I can drop the video card one slot and have still room for it. So a Fudu 2 card can be an option for this uh, motherboard and i think i got this benchy from a dumpster from some random standard pc okay it gives some display 60 megabyte no artifacts here that is nice windows nt isn't crashed and uh already saw that there's a new video card in it and now it's a standard 16 color mode so let's first go to the control panel and add and remove programs and let's remove all the components of the old drivers because windows nt can be really picky about drivers so let's clean it up and if this doesn't work the only solution is to reinstall windows nt yeah it was not the best uh, polished experience <laughs> of course restart windows uh, be right back. Let's install the Fudu Benchy driver. So Fudu Benchy driver kit, Windows NT, Clyde, Clyde, Control Panel, OpenGL. That's all I need. So that should be fine. And this is the latest driver of the Fudu Benchy for Windows NT. I really don't like all the displays that everything you opened something it's a new window. Like now it's a new window. <laughs> Let's see, uh, is there a set up? Nope. Uh, properties, uh, settings, display type, change. Have disk. Browse. My computer, C, temp, benchy.info. Okay, 3DFX Interactive Ink Fulu Benchy. Okay, third party driver, that's fine. Successfully installed. And I think it will now say, please reboot your system. <laughs> of course, it's Windows NT. Nice, the Fulu Benchy is detected. Let's put on true color 1024768. Let's first just test it. Okay, this looks fine. Let's try Quake 2. I'm not sure if it is the default OPGL on the Benchy or the 3DFX OPGL. Let's try it out. Maybe both. At least it's now full screen. Oh, it's still software. 3DFX OPGL. Okay, this is working and with an acceptable frame rate. That it is just playable. But this is just 640 by 480, so not the highest resolution. But I think I need to install the sound card. Home setup, so no setup program, so settings, control panel. Uh, multimedia devices at device 
unlisted or updated driver, browse, Sound Blaster 16 and MIDI. Let's first do the Sound Blaster 16. Let's restart now and then do the MIDI driver. Okay, the sound card works. So let's uh, install the MIDI driver now. Creative Blaster MIDI out. Sound Blaster devices. Or is already installed on MIDI for Creative Sound Blaster 16. Let's first test out if there's MIDI working. Okay, no MIDI. Add unlisted or updated driver, browse. Okay, let's try the Creative Sound Blaster AWA 32 MIDI synth. New driver and restart. Okay, the MIDI is still not working, but let's go to multimedia. MIDI single instrument is now on Sound Blaster. Let's put it on the AWA 3264 MIDI synth. Okay. Does this help? Maybe I need to reboot. Cannot play back the file. <laughs> hmm. Hey! The MIDI is working! And this is the AWA 64 MIDI. Yes, this is the AWA 64 MIDI. And this is the Sound Blaster 32, but it's actually just an AWA 64. And to be honest, this little micro speaker is not the baddest sound I ever heard. Let's play the Monkey Island tune, but on the MT32 it sounds much better. But this is not bad. Okay, this is a little bit too much for the speakers. <laughs> it sounds weird because the speakers were too loud So let's test out the headphone jack. Will it mute the speakers? Ah Yes, with the headphone jack in it mutes the speakers and now my st studio speakers are playing and they sound much better than this unit. But this is not bad, I really like it. Now let's play the best game ever made. FX OpenGL Mini Driver 800 by 600. Good morning and welcome to the Black Mesa Transit System. This automated train is provided for the security and convenience of the Black Mesa Research Facility personnel. That runs pretty smooth. The 
doors were just amazing in Half Life. Hey, Mr. Freeman, I had a bunch of messages for you, but we had a system crash about 20 minutes ago. Oh, hey, God, what are that. you doing? Come on, Gordon. <laughs> this is really playable. One game, create game, boot camp. And I think boot camp is one of the best multiplayer maps uh, in stock uh, Half Life. There's so much possible in to set traps, to to hide, to run around, and it's really a maze. It's pretty big, and it's just a good experience with like. 8 up to 12 16 persons it will be just chaos and fun and every corner can be dangerous and if you have players that are really good they jump around like uh, crazy it's just a really good fun map whoops and the performance is uh, pretty solid, so if you are on a LAN party with similar systems, you will have a very good time. Maybe you can better put it in this map on 640x480 if you are playing it multiplayer, just to have a little bit more advantage, but in general, it's a really good experience. Everything is working now in the systems, all the drives are installed, the sound card is working with MIDI, the Voodoo Benshee is now working, the Voodoo Rush, too bad it didn't work, but the Scusi is working, the network card is working, a good uh, fast plexer drive, speakers are now fixed, it's just a nice uh, system with good performance from Pentium Pro, so yeah, I, uh, I like this build. So if you like to support me, you can support me monthly on Patreon or use my Amazon affiliated links. Thanks for watching.